My first attempt at catching cats was on the river Ebro in Spain, where unfortunately, in two days I drew a blank. Then we came here to Angler's Paradise to do this filming, and, well, you can see for yourself. Within an hour of casting in using two halibut pellets on a free-lined her rig, the big bait runner was paying out line. It's not a big one. It's 20 plus, isn't it? Not the biggest specimen, which when it's your first fish, doesn't really matter. Well, we were on our way back from a shark fishing trip out from Boscastle. Besides which, big cats, which are known to frequent some of Zig's lakes, are a pretty formidable handful. So I make no excuses here at all for using a medium uptight outfit for my first fish. Watch your net down going. Now oh, he's going to go backwards. Once that one's in the bag, then I can start to think about some of the more sporting approaches used by Andy Spriggings and Ian Pilling. But at this moment in time, I was just happy to be hooked up. I've arrived here on Zig Gregorick's Angler's Paradise. I'm on the banks now, ready to start fishing, but I've got to admit to you, I've never even seen or caught one of these big catfish. So, the best place I've got is here talking to an expert, and with me is Andrew, who's been here several times. Andrew, can you give me some tips? I've been coming here for about four years um, I've always wanted to get a catfish and it was it took me about two years to work what out was going on uh, my friends had had them um, uh, we've been up to easy access and so we'd going down to octopussy and things like that and we just decided we were going to go for it this you know last year what's the sort of gear that you use to catch these catfish well I've been using uh, a two and a half pound test curve carp rod uh, with 15 pound breaking strain mono uh, my hook length, as you can see, it's coated braid, 40 pounds, uh, with a size 1 hook and a decent size hair on it. And then I've just got a quick link. Um, this, if you can see here, is lead core. But it's just a running rig. I've got no bolt rig on it or anything. There's just a stop bead there. And the, obviously the weight can go up and down. It's just a 2 ounce lead. That's all it is. It's nothing clever. It's just very, very strong. Now that one, Andrew, I can see is actually a running ledger rig, I can, I, can, I can equate to that one. But what about these carp anglers that use a bolt rig, what they call the bolt rig? You know, is that acceptable or is it usable in the situation for catching catfish? People do use them for catfish. Um, I'm not a big fan of them, to be honest, uh, because the leads discharge very easily from them. If you use these safety clips like I've got here, I would tend to just use running rigs for most things. The only th good thing about these is that it will set the hook for you, whereas you do still have to strike with a running rig most of the time. This is a bolt rig, as you can see the tail rubber comes off, you can then put the weight on and then slide that back on. It's best to wet it first with, you know, with a bit of uh, spit generally. Now what that does is, you've got your bolt effect, but should you become snagged or you lose the fish, the fish will eventually run into the reeds or something and that will just discharge that and the lead can eventually drop off so that you're not pinning the carp or the catfish to the bottom of the lake not causing it any extra discomfort they do have the advantages uh, as it's, the name suggests it is a bolt rig as soon as the carp feels the weight of this rig it runs and it sets the hook itself so you don't really have to strike hard on it you just have to pull into the fish. Whereas with a free running lead, you have to strike still properly. I've never seen a lead this shape before. I mean, that's, uh, it's got to be a bit specialist. So what on earth is that for? Like the lead core, a back lead is designed to help pin your line to the bottom of the lake to prevent line bites and hide the line from the fish. It's also helpful um, so that if you're fishing in, where with two rods in or two baits in close proximity that uh, your lines won't get crossed and mixed up if you're playing another fish. So what you would do with it is when you've cast out you would then pull your rod back and clip this to your line in front of your rod. I'll have to do it here but you get the idea. So once that's clipped on it's free running and it'll just go down your line and pin, pin it to the bottom of the lake like so. So you've got one lead there and then it'll keep it flat to the bottom of the lake like that. I want to know what goes on the business end. What do you put on the hook? There's several baits you can use. 
fish meal and meaty are the best types of base to use. Um, they do come out on other things occasionally, but if you stick to fish meal and meat, you can't really go wrong. Um, on the, the cheaper end of the scale, spam's very good. Spam, if you decide to glug it or dunk it in something fishy or an oil, that's really good. Um, but for me, I like to use halibut pellets, the bigger the better. Um, they absolutely stink, but they work, they really do the business. Um, you can also use boilies. Um, I've got some here which tend to work quite well, they're called the sauce. They smell quite meaty. Um, and they're also, people tend to use other fish meal boilies like monster crab, squid. I've got two types of halibut pellet here. One of them has been pre-drilled for me, but if you can't get your hand on them, you can get a specialist bait tool called a bait drill. And luckily this one also has a baiting needle on it. So you just drill your own hole while you're on the bank and then just thread it onto your baiting needle like so. So if you need to drill those pellets out then you use a drill, make the hole through the centre then you just thread them straight onto the baiting needle which already has a hooked end to draw the braided loop of the hair right through the hole. I've seen this method used on small baits like boilies for carp but I've never seen it before with baits as big as these huge halibut feed pellets. So I kind of asked myself this, is a herring absolutely essential for catfish? I mean what about dark, you know, when they're hard on the feed, they're night predators effectively? Or is this just the easiest way to present a hard bodied hook bait? As you can see it's just hanging there on that loop with a stop. It looks just like those you scattered in as loose feed. Well I was sitting up there by my bobbins, I can't believe it, I'm thinking God damn, the only thing I'm going to catch here is a suntan, it's so quiet. It's not quiet, we just got word on the grapevine that up here, one of Zig's regulars has got a big catfish in broad daylight. I want to see that one. Just past the island, bring it back about 12 foot. And then just... And then we're ready to go. Ready? Ready? Yep. Ready? Yep. There you go. 34 pounds. Uh, caught on inline lead. Two uh, 16 mil halibut. Let's see what it's been feeding on. Lovely fish. Got a close in on, on his face. It's not my biggest fish. My uh, biggest fish here is 49.2. Uh, but it's nice to see it come out in the sun and the daylight. Very strong, very slimy. Just a little tip of what we're using. It's a straightforward inline lead with yeah, uh, two 16mm halibut pellets, a uh, size 4 hook. As I say, all in line, straightforward, cattle take it all day. Then just before the 34, about an hour before, we had one that uh, screamed off and took us round the island. Obviously, it's a snag and just snapped me. I tried to walk around the lake, but that was it, it uh, just snapped. Well, we heard that uh, yourself and Andrew. Uh, did pretty good last night, uh, Jeff. So you better tell us all about it. We want to know. Uh, Andrew got one in the evening, just before uh, 12 o'clock. It was a very large fish. Um, I was sitting uh, in the next uh, at the next peg to him, and I heard his bite alarm go off, and I heard him shout. And so I came rushing up. Uh, he was he was out there, and his rod was almost bent double. I, I had the net, and I thought if I don't get this in the net. Uh, we're in big trouble here. He won't speak to me ever again. We wrapped it in the net and put it in uh, on, on my mat, uh, my sling, uh, and basically he tried his scales and it bottomed out at 50 pounds. Uh, I got my set uh, and overall when we were knocked it off it was actually 48 pounds 3 ounce. So that was a really good fish. 